15 publications in peer-reviewed journals. The translational nature of his work also led to seven patents, applications for innovations, including wound dressings, long-term drug delivery, ultra-slippery antibacterial surfaces, and antibacterial technology. Jiten also won over 20 awards during his PhD studies, including the Brahm P. Verma Award for Academic and Leadership Excellence. As best graduate student, Chair's Award for Excellence in Research Biomedical Engineering uh, Society Research Award, and Georgia Bioinnovation Best Research Presentation Award. Jiten has also served as Secretary of the UGA Chapter of Toastmasters International and was among the top three finalists of the Three Minute Thesis Competition in 2017. For his promising results on wound healing research, G10 was recently acknowledged by Dr. Robert Redfield, Director of Centers for Disease Control. His hard work has paid off as he has employment offers from leading in, uh, industries and institutes like the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, G10 is an aspiring educator and every year he visits India to give leadership seminars to students in Indian schools and universities. Besides research, G10 is a passionate singer and was selected as a runner-up in the musical competition Idea Rocks India by the leading Indian music director Shankar Mavadevan. During his free time, he works on his novel, A Fool Who Ate Hunger, so keep an eye out for that. Please join me in welcoming Jiten as today's student speaker. And my last name is spelled as P A N T. I don't know who the hell came up with that. <laughs> so, naturally, a lot of people call me Pan, and others they prefer to call me just P. When you are given such options in life, you don't know which one is more worse than the other. <laughs> And I can laugh about these things today, but as a kid, it used to annoy me a lot. Pretty much like this, life does not always give you the best options to choose from. I was born to a guy, a jungle guy, in a small town in India. My father was forced to quit his studies after his 10th grade. Similarly, my mom could not finish her schooling after her 5th grade. When I started my schooling, my father used to make 3,000 rupees per month, which is equivalent to $40 per month. So basically, he was making $1 something per day. You can only imagine how difficult it was for my parents to raise four of their kids. Life was difficult. I never received any pocket money. So in order to make some money, I decided to give tuitions. So when I was in my fifth grade, I gave tuition to a kid who was in his second grade. The whole month, I was eagerly waiting for my salary to come. But when you are poor, some people think that you don't deserve good things in life. And I was not paid my salary at the end of the month. It was this hard time. I faced many similar problems. Sometimes, my school uniform was also the clothing I would wear to a friend's birthday party or for an outing. So basically, Jitain the pant had no new pants to wear. <laughs> to the young kid that I was, life seemed very unfair, life seemed very hopeless. Very early in my life, I realized that education is the only hope for my family to overcome our circumstances. But I was not intellectually sound. I was good in studies, I was okie dokie, but I was not intellectually sound. No, it wasn't. But I had to study not because I loved it, but because getting good grades was my only option. And guess what? It paid off. When I finished my high school, I was the topper of my high school. From my undergraduate, I was among the top three students. I finished my master's from number one ranked engineering college in India, and I was among the top two students. And today, I'm getting my degree from University of Georgia, which is ranked 16th among the national universities in US. 
but life is not a fairy tale. It took me more than 200 rejections between the first PhD application that I made in 2011 and my final acceptance in UGA four years later in 2015. I applied to universities across the world. Basically, nobody thought I was ready to do my PhD. I felt very useless. I didn't know what GRE is. I didn't know what TOEFL is. I had nobody to ask or seek uh, guidance to apply for the big universities abroad. And moreover, I didn't have money to pay for these application fees. So I fed myself on biscuits. I skipped, I skipped my meal to collect some money so that I can apply abroad. And finally, when the whole world treated me like a slum dog, University of Georgia saw a bulldog in me. <laughs> Dr. Hitesh Anda in the College of Engineering. He took me under his umbrella. He provided me full funding during my PhD. He gave me the freedom to be creative. He gave, he gave me the wing to fly. And as it turned out, today I'm finishing my PhD with 16 publications, seven patents, and more than 20 awards. I was on top of the world when my work was acknowledged by the director of CDC. It did not make sense back then, but when I look back now, it makes complete sense. If I would not have struggled so much, if I would not have failed so many times, I would not have the courage to stand in front of you today. I feel humbled. So here is my advice to all the students who are graduating today, and to everyone else who would like to take a piece of advice from me. Number one, respect your parents for investing money in your education. They work very, very hard to make sure that you lead a good life. Number two, never stop believing in yourself. And number three, take actions to turn your dreams into reality. Pretty much like how you apply to the College of Engineering and are graduating today with flying colors. It is your responsibility to make sure that you apply to the College of Dreams. It is your responsibility that you apply to the College of Hope. It is your responsibility that you apply to the University of Actions. There are 7.8 million people out there. Make sure that your voice is heard and never ever give up on yourself. People will laugh at you, people will doubt you for dreaming big, but never ever give up on yourself. I'm sure that our paths will cross again. And next time, when we meet, I want you to tell me that you are making the best out of your circumstances and that you are proud of yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Jitan, for those wonderful remarks. I'm having an issue with my glasses up here, so please apologize. There we